Good morning guys, welcome to my channel. So this morning I want to work on the prompt, the pumpkin, and thanks to the lovely Sonia, she has put up a video showing us how to bead a pumpkin, which was just so helpful. I would never have thought of having the two needles threaded and going through the beads each time as you anchor down your row of beads to build the shape of the pumpkin. So that was brilliant. I, I was sitting, I even made my husband watch the uh, episode. I'll link the video below so you know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, really, really good. So I've been thinking about it all night and I've got a bit of a plan and a slight variation on the plan, I think. So I'm going to give it a go. If it doesn't work, I can unpick it and um, try again. Um, the other thing I want to do in this video is, if you remember in that haul I did, I've got my little crinoline lady that is um, fudgy, don't you jump up, is on the end of this handkerchief. So I want to take her out. It's a bit of an old looking hanky. It's, it's had its day. It's been sitting in the cupboard for a long time, I'd say. So I want to get my little girl out. Uh, she's the perfect size for my piece and find a home for her as well. Okay, so my plan is to cut out my pumpkin in felt, which I've done. Um, that's going to give me that little bit of structure. But I want to stitch it down first, I think. And I'm going to attempt to take the beads from the top to the bottom. Sonia went across the little pumpkin. I'm going to attempt to come down the pumpkin. And just to mix it up a little bit, I'm thinking, I'm not convinced yet I can pull it off. I'm thinking about putting a bullion stitch in amongst the beads. So that's the plan. So let's see how we go. So let me find a needle that's suitable for this crocheting, crocheting cotton. And I'm just going to stitch I'm going to nestle the pumpkin in here I think I've um, I've got some fabric coming that I ordered from Etsy which is a chiffon that is ombre so it it drifts through color and I think it'll be really helpful for this type of crafting because we only need snippets of colors and fabrics we don't need one big piece so what I've got coming is this ombre and I picked a pink a couple blues I think that might have been it yeah I think yeah I think that was it and that is going to drift through different colors from really pale blue for example to a midnight blue and I'm going to use a little bit of it over here because this is very strong and I want it sort of to be a little bit more subtle than that and I've searched everywhere in my stash and I just cannot find anything that would knock it back a little bit in tone oops I threaded my needle so I've got that coming hopefully that'll arrive within the week doesn't matter if it doesn't we can avoid that area so I'll just get this stitched down with a quick little overcast stitch to secure my little pumpkin and I might do some lines on the pumpkin just to give myself a bit of a guide I could draw them, I could stitch them. Maybe I won't need it, maybe I can do it. As long as this little guy's stitched down, I don't want him to interfere with my stitches. Thanks again, Sonia. That was really, really good. It was very good of you to interrupt your filming schedule that you've got and quickly whip out a pumpkin beading video it was great okay it's coming around this other side I 
right. Let me know in the comments if anyone else is going to have a go at beading a pumpkin. I think it'd have to be one of the easier um, vegetables we could try. Like Sonia suggested, carrot would come up very well. I guess when you start thinking about most of the veggies, they've all got basic shapes about them, so they wouldn't be too hard, but a pumpkin certainly, I think, is a good one to tackle. I haven't thought too much about the leaves. The tendrils will be pretty easy. I'll just do what I did last time with the... Um, oh, it's not even on this piece. I think it's the champagne garden. I twisted the cotton around the pencil with some glue, let it dry, and then just slid it off. That seemed to work really well. Okay, let's have a go. Now, Sonia brought the needle up on the one side. Now, Sonia's video, the, the beads went across the pumpkin. I'm going to try... get this secure okay I might turn my work so I'm sort of doing it the way Sonia did but it'll end up being you know the other way otherwise I'm gonna have a mess of needles and threads and I'll just get this started here. I love how this project of oops of Rachel and Sarah's is just pushing our boundaries. I don't know when I would have sat down one day to stitch a pumpkin, a beaded pumpkin. Like it just wouldn't have happened. It would have been a general project or so I've lined them up. So I've got one either side. That's how Sonia did it. Except like I said, she came up here and here. All right, so we've got a couple choices. And that's my cotton. I'm thinking of doing it very neutral. Or is that safe? Let's have a look at the green beads. We could have a green and... Green and cream. Pumpkins can be quite pretty. All right, let's have a go. Just measuring. Now we're going to keep the beads on our needle because we're going to thread... the second needle through the beads as well. I haven't counted them like Sonia has yet, but I'm just going to sort of get them on the needle and gauge my size. That's pretty good, but I do want it to curve, so I'm going to add one more. Okay. Yep. All right. So then she got the second needle. Because, you know, the general rule of thumb is every bead needs it stitched through twice to really hold them secure. And that way, of course, if a needle gives way, I'm going to have to turn that. If a needle gives way, a thread gives way, sorry. You've got two, two threads through your beads. I hope I can get it through, yes. Oh, yep. There we go. 
And then she went down the top there. And this one, just to secure the pumpkin beads. So that's it. How simple is that? So that needle's now ready to reload. This one just needs to come back up in position. Might just move it over a fraction. Yep. Okay, so we go again. And that's it. How good is that? Do another row because then I think, oh no, I might keep, do I keep going and get my beads all into position, then do the bullion? It's probably a wise idea. Let's do another row. There's a little divot at the top and the bottom of the pumpkin, so I'm thinking there's a few less beads is probably a good idea just to start getting that shape. I would never have thought to use two needles coming with two threads, like that's genius. Come on, oh, it's fiddly. She did it so smoothly on the video. It's confidence, isn't it? Come on, nice little bead, there we go. knottiness here now. Bring that under there. Okay. Another row done. So I can bring that through to secure the thread. And then I can bring it up a little bit further along, ready for the next row. Once again, secure this side. Okay. And we're back up. I think this will work. We'll do one more row. Then I might stop the video, get my rows of beads all in. So otherwise we'll be here till the cows come home. And then we can have a look at the bullion stitch to go between them. I guess if that doesn't work, we could probably put another row of beads. One more. Now we're picking up a bit of speed. 
Oh, I think that one might be too long. Hold the phone. Yeah, that needs to lose one bead. It's being finicky now, aren't I? <clears throat> Get rid of him. Rethread again. Isn't our life full of just rethreading needles? Okay, so now I can come back through those. Oh, fiddly, fiddly. Beading is a bit that way. It's, it's fun, but it is fiddly. If big strokes of thread is your thing, well, then this is not your thing. Come on, get in there. Got him. Okay. Threads everywhere. Take my time. There we go. Another line. So we'll come in now and just secure this little guy, this little row. And then bring the needle back up a little bit further along. Ready for the next line of beads. And I just need to secure this. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'm going to stop the video. I will get the rest of the beads in position. Then I'll be back with a bit of a plan on what we do with the uh, rest of our little pumpkin. Isn't he gorgeous? I'm hoping the bullion stitch will sort of push the beads around a little bit to get that curve. That's the plan anyway. I'm thinking it will work. All right, guys, I will be back in a few seconds. Bye. Hi, guys, I'm back. So I'm just in the process of unpicking my first bullion. It didn't quite work. Well, it worked, but it didn't work. Okay, I'll just show you what I believe is the problem. My bullion wasn't thick enough to hold its own between the rows of the little beads. So at the end of the day, I have a beaded pumpkin. So that's him there. And I just did a bullion out of the crochet yarn, which is number eight. And it just disappeared. Some of it stayed, the rest disappeared. So I'm just now, I've just unpicked it. And I'm just going to see if I've got something a little bit thicker that might hold its own. I probably should have had the um, beads spaced apart a little bit more. But I just want to have one more try. I can always do a second pumpkin with bullion knots to the side of it. But before I... But I do love this just beaded. Like, it's just great. But I just want to try one more time. Where's a bigger needle with... Better eye. I'd say for every beaded strand I did, I should have left that gap of one strand. Then I could have laid the bullion knot down between the stripes easily. So I'm just going to just have one more time. I, I don't know, I don't think it'll work, but let's try it with this wool. I just want to do like every second or third row with a bullion just to give that feeling that the pumpkin has those segments that they do. But it's going to have to be a fairly thick stitch so that um, it can handle sitting in amongst all of the beads. If it doesn't work, that's fine because... Can go and try it elsewhere. 
Okay, so just winding for this little pink, little piece of tulle, purple tulle in my way there. Okay, I don't know if that's going to be enough winding. Who knows, but it's fun experimenting, isn't it? But I'm happy with the beads. So thank you, thank you, Sonia. That worked a treat. Tedious, but it worked a treat. Oh, come on. My needle probably doesn't have a thin enough eye on it to make my life simple, but, you know, that's typical. Not the right tools for the job. Okay, let's have a look at this. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. That crochet cotton was just a little bit too fine. That's better. See how you can see the little line there? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's do another one. Maybe out here a little bit. Don't need a lot of them because it's just the sort of giving the eye just that little bit more detail on the pumpkin. Lots of winding. So if you've never done a bullion stitch, there's heaps of videos out there on them. But you're pretty much winding your thread around your needle and then you're pulling your needle through that wrap. The girls, Rachel and Sarah, have some videos of basic stitches that they did with everyone back in January last year when this project, Roxy Journal of Stitchery, kicked off. But there's heaps and heaps of videos on bullion stitch out there. So now I feel like I've pulled it too tight. Maybe putting it between the beads is not such a bright idea, Corinne. I'll just have a fiddle. Get that little guy back up. That little guy in position. Yeah, that's all right. work okay I'm just going to end this off because I need some more thread I wonder if I could use that as the stem before I get rid of that excess yarn there what if I Yeah, we might just stitch in the little stalk. Just with a few little stitches. That needs to be a bit more pronounced. They usually have a bit of a curve about them, don't they? Yeah, that will do the trick. Now I can end that off. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Is it going to sit okay or is it going to disappear like the previous? It just sits okay there. There we go. It's very subtle. It looks better in my light, but it's just to help 
create a bit of variation in the surface of the pumpkin. So it does sort of give it more of a round look. But I don't know, that's my theory. It's my working theory. I might just bring another one here and maybe one at the end there. Maybe another one at that end. So anyway, it's fun trying, isn't it? Just adds texture to the little pumpkin. Let's bring him up over here. Back down over there. Get my hands in the right position. It's so fiddly. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? Oops, I shouldn't have pulled it through. I was looking at that row of beads there and it should have been a couple beads less. It's just sitting up. That's right, so we go down in there, but don't pull the needle through and you tuck it back up to the top. So you're not, you've got this loop hanging here, ready to have the, the wrapped thread come through it. Sorry about my finger. I've got a few injuries at the moment. I've got a tap at the side of the house that I sort of have to do a bit of rinsing out of, you know, kitty litter every morning. And the the tap's really hard to turn now. So the washer or whatever's inside is starting to need, well, it needs replacing. So it's quite an effort to turn this tap. And of course it's on a brick wall so you know what happened. I gave it a bit of a, a turn. And in the process, cheese grated my finger down the brick wall. Couldn't believe it. I've been whinging about this tap being needing some fixing for a little while. So I was able to show my husband the injury I sustained due to that tap not being fixed. Goodness, what have I done here? Oh, it's, all, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Lovely. Not too tight, Corinne. We just want it enough so it just peeks out over the stitches of the beads. Yep. subtle meaning it's probably the not the right right thickness of thread but I think it'll work I think it's good enough I'm happy with it probably could be more more of a feature I guess It's pretty good. I'm really happy with the beaded portion of it. I think that looks super cute. Oh, come on. That's it. Bullion stitch using a wool. Is really pretty. You get a nice chunky, chunky finish. It's just a case of fiddling with it until you get it sitting right. I should have enough to do another one out here on this edge, I think, just to. Finish it off. Only needs a little little bit of wrapping and yarn. And of course the other injury on my other little finger, young bandit, bandit loves playing in the hose water. So I goose around with him and 
I'm unwrapping it. Yeah, so we're playing with the hose and it's just been so hot. We're in the middle of a heat wave here in Queensland. Would you believe like down south, the bottom of Australia, this place is getting snow and here we're having a heat wave. So it's really pleasant watching snow falling. And we're sweltering. So Bandit and I were playing in the with a hose. And of course he's chomping at the water. So yeah, basically he chomped my little finger. He didn't mean to. I yelled. He freaked out and was like, oh my goodness. He's such a, a caring soul, that boy. You could see he was like, oh, what have I done? It was so cute. Meanwhile, my fingers had a chomp. Naughty boy. It wasn't his fault. It was me being an idiot. So now I'm just going to tease those up a little bit, just so the beads are sitting a little bit under them. Go to all that effort and lose... This little guy back up. It can come that side. Yep, that's better. Yeah, that's really helped give that pumpkin a little bit of shape. It's probably, I'm looking up at the camera on the screen and it, I don't think I'm doing it much justice for you guys to see the color tone, but it does look good. My end. All right, so now I need to have a think about the leaves. Do I just embroider them or do I 3D dimension? Um, they'd have to be very small if I did create a three-dimensional leaf. I guess it's doable. But maybe they're too small to sort of for the eye to go, yeah, that's a pumpkin leaf. I don't know. I don't have any green felt or fabric handy. So I would need to stop the video again and go and see what I can source. Or my other option is I just stitch, stitch them in. I sort of need to keep it in the tones too. I can't go too crazy. I'm in the purple zone. So I don't know. There we go. One big pumpkin sitting there next to that. Okay. Leaves. What will we do? Um... Can I see any green fabric at a glance? Um, I know they, it'll be so small. I could be exaggerated, hey? I guess when I think back to the pumpkin patch of my father's, the pumpkin leaves were pretty big, actually, weren't they? Um, some felt would be good. I wonder if I've got green felt. Hang on one moment. Let's have a look in here and see if I've got some felt that suits. Ugh. Ugh. Mm. Hmm. Have I got a scrap? These are all really bright primary colours, I think. The green. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I've got to go neutral and we... Maybe I'll look at this one again. Maybe it's better than I thought. Oh, it's just... Mm. Let's have another look at this one. It 
just not sort of feel like I need to stay neutral. I know it's it's more stylized. That's too bright. Let's have a look over in this container. Do I get more of a a brown leaf? I know it's technically not. But do I stitch then something? Let me just cut a little piece off of this because it's huge. Do we... Do I keep it? Um, let's have a little... Pumpkin leaves have a weird shape, don't they? I need some inspiration. Let me just get on Mr. Google. Mr. Google knows everything. Have you noticed? Isn't he a, a very well-learned fellow? Well, he likes to think he is. Pumpkin leaves. Let's get a shape. I often go to um, also, I'll do sketch. And then you get some really good. Okay, so I should know this being a pumpkin farmer's daughter, but I'll just put that to one side. We need quite a, a jaggedy looking jaggedy looking leaf I don't know give it a go gosh what is, what's that seriously what is that and it's not a pumpkin leaf I need to sketch it stop mucking around Corinne Okay, let's get this a little bit of a shape there and a shape there. A couple triangles just to give me a bit of a guide. So let's get that guy out there. Even this is not looking like it's going to work, but we'll give it a go. It's sort of got three components to it. Even that's not looking right. I have a feeling that this will be too chunky for my piece. And I think I'm going to need to, yeah, I think I'll keep going here. But I think they either need to be very, very small. And then I'm going to lose the definition of a good pumpkin leaf. Where I'm probably better off satin stitching something. Looks like a footprint. No, I think the phone, uh, the felt, is just too, too thick, and too big to give us the detail we need. So we're going to forget about that idea. How are we going for time? We've got plenty of time. So I think we're going to have a few of these little leaves coming off. Like so. Yeah, I think. And it tends to be a vine, like they creep out along the ground. Yeah, I can get more control over the size of things by... Yep. Now, colour. Do we do this guy? It's a little variegated fellow. Or, let me put this felt away. Do we do something more pale? No, too iridescent. Very similar. And we need a bit of brown, I think, just to break it up a little bit. All right, let's give it a go. Where's a needle? Oop. Okay. All right, so. 
So let's get a little stem coming off for a start. And then we might, where will we start? We'll come up to the tip, I think. And just do a little leaf that sort of V's down on itself each time. Like so. Could even do a little, little fly stitch let's do that so i took the needle to the side of that first stitch and i'm going to pick it up like so and then you anchor him down so he doesn't go anywhere and then you just repeat so you come out to the side whether that's really a pumpkin leaf or not it's another thing but and then down here, let me zoom in. So I'm doing a stitch that, where's my needle? Will give me that V shape. Now I'm coming up at the base in the center of the leaf, if you will, catching. the stitch okay so then I need to anchor the stitch down that I just did now we're going again and because the pumpkin leaf is a bit ragged looking I might be able to then sneak out here a little bit I'm still coming back to that center but let's break the line of the leaf a little bit Coming back to the center so that keeps that center line correct and then finish that little guy that stitch off with a tiny little stitch to anchor it in the center then we come out again scoot over to the other side just bring it in a little bit But before it completely tightens up, just bring that needle up in the center to catch that thread. I'm taking my glasses off so I can't see the TV. Let's just double check you guys can see. Yep, that's looking good. That's it. And then finish the little stitch. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll give that ragged looking pumpkin leaf look, I think. The felt just would have been too bulky. We would have lost the definition that we need. That'll work on the, a bigger piece. My next piece to work on is our French garden. I sort of tend to leave that to the end. I get these little guys done, these little projects done, so then I could spend the rest of the week working on the French garden and I'll have a lot more wriggle room there so I can have a really good play with the shape of the pumpkin leaf. I think I've got a pattern somewhere too from the old days that I'd love to reuse, revisit. So I need to hunt that out. You guys will see that the next day. So you're watching this, I'm filming this Sunday, but you'll be watching this Monday if you're in Australia. Okay, that's good. That will work. Yeah, see, it's the right size too. Let me bring that right up. And I think once that red ink is gone there, you will see that there's a little gap in there where I sort of stop following the line of the leaf and I jump down a little bit just to give us that um, broken 
broken look. He's quite a textured little fellow. Pretty happy with him. So how are we going for time? We've got plenty of time. So I'm just going to pop another little leaf in. I'll give myself a stem first. So I've got that anchoring point for my eye. And I won't join him in yet. I'll just leave it at that. I can always come back and pop a little bit more of a stitch in to connect him in. My dad's actually struggling with the pumpkins at the moment. He's got a couple acres of them planted. Um, so I'm just doing my top stitch. Because we're having a heat wave, he's trying to keep moisture up to them. They're, they're to the point where they're throwing the runners now. So it's sort of that critical stage of the plant getting nice and strong and a good size to carry the pumpkin fruit. Oh, I don't think they're fruit anyway, but yeah, so he said he's watering every 48 hours. So he's changing. That's the whole paddock. Every 48 hours get a, gets a complete watering. But he's changing the irrigation every two hours, I think he said, to keep them, to keep them moist. And he said he's, by the time he gets to the one side of the paddock, the first side is they're all looking limp and a bit sad. So he then has to start again. And uh, my hometown is world famous for the pumpkin festival, the Gamari pumpkin festival. So dad supplies the pumpkins most of the time, depending on weather. You know, there was one year where the weather wiped them out they just didn't fruit the way they should have. So the committee had to buy them in from the markets in Brisbane. So, but most of the time, they're dad's pumpkins. So he's planted his patch ready for the festival. Unfortunately, the committee has decided to not proceed with the festival this year. The lady that was running it has retired and left the district. So they're trying to find someone that can step in to sort of help navigate it all. So they're just sorting through the logistics of all that and they just won't be able to pull it together in time for the festival in May. So at the last Sunday in May. I'm just going to jump down now a little bit further to get that break. Otherwise, my leaf is going to be looking too similar. So unfortunately, the festival's not going ahead. But the, the couple acres of pumpkins will still be used because dad has a few um, cattle I think it's about 11 that he just um, helps keep the grass down you know and they love pumpkins so the lads will munch their way through these pumpkins no problems dad will harvest them get them into the shed and um yeah. I must find a photo for you of the pumpkins in the shed. Just thousands of the things. That's good. I'm happy with that little leaf. Gee, I hope that was on camera for you. So just connecting it in, I might just do another little stitch here. And then bring that stitch into there. And bring it down into this little guy as well. So the other thing I want to do is create some little tendrils just to add to the story which was using the white PVA glue around some thread and a, a um, pen and just sort of letting it nearly dry so it got held the little twist I'm just going to making my way up this side to catch 
little thread up here, a little uh, leaf. So there's my little top stitch to get me started. Okay, now I'm just going to turn the work. I find it a bit easier to work down the leaf. We'll just finish this off. That's it. And then finish the little stitch. So we're using a little fly stitch. Such a great little stitch. You can do a lot with fly stitch. You can have them connected. You can have them separated. You can have that little anchoring stitch that I'm doing longer. I'm going to go out from that peak. So in my case here, I'm just doing a little stitch. But if this was lo longer, like down there, you get quite a different finish to your stitch. You can really play with fly stitch. It's a pretty, pretty little stitch. Perfect for leaves. I remember doing satin stitch back in the day when I was a kid. Oh, I hate it. I hate satin stitch because I can never get the threads to lay nice and flat, beautiful. So if only I had have realized there was a fly stitch, my doilies would have had fly stitch all over them. Here we go, just a little leaf there. There we go. So what I'll do is that space there will be air for a little tendril. Then I'll probably bring one down the front over that pumpkin a little bit, sitting in that zone. So I might just end this off because I'm a little bit away from where I need to be. So I will keep going with these leaves. I'll make the tendrils. If you want to see how they're made, go back a couple videos to where I was doing Champagne Garden and I did... Where is it? I did some um, wisteria or grapes in the wildflower prompt on this one. So I'll make the tendrils the same. I won't do it now because you've got to get some glue out and muck around. It's right at the top, but I will do the same thing. There it is there. See that? How they're twisted and they've got a little bit of structure about them because they've been glued so i'll do a similar sort of thing just using some thread so i'll add those once i've finished the little leaves here we go for time we are ticking along maybe we work on my crinoline lady because i did say i wanted to find a home for her so let's Leave the leaves. I'll finish down through here to create that vine effect. But I just want to pinch out this little gill. And we find a home for her on my little piece. And I can then stitch her down as well. So I'm just going to fussy cut her out very carefully. Isn't she gorgeous? How delicate is that crochet ring? My goodness, the size of hook needed for that. Oh, oh my goodness. I can't do that crochet ring that fine. That's, my grandmother would have, but oh. It's just too much hard work on my eyes. I don't need to put them under that stress. I'm only a young pup and I'd like to see I've got another 100 years of embroidery in front of me. What do you think? Let me zoom up a little bit. So do we put her there? Or do we bring her back to maybe this pink zone? 
he's gone through the garden gate. Do like that. Or do we bring it back up here to, no, it's sort of, oh, maybe there. No. We're going to have to probably add to this. I'm going to be surprised if we can make this all fit. I think she needs to actually come into this pink zone or she is no see we're not gonna I like her up here I think she's going up here we've got a little bit of a contrast happening so you can see that there's something happened and there's a feature here. So she's going in here. She's going to be skipping through the garden. Poor old girl. She's got a bit of staining there. But that's all right. That's because she's telling a story. Been sitting in a cupboard. She's now got a home. So little girl is going to be there. She's skipping through the garden. And my little pumpkin, I'll finish those there. I will make some little tendril, tendrils, tendrils. Oh, goodness. Sonia was struggling with the word too. It's a, a shocking word. Might be an Aussie thing. Thinking I'm going to use the chocolate thread. Because they need to be very fine, I might use my book all that end and just put some glue on that thread and wind it around to get just a tiny little tendril. I'll cover that book all end in a little bit of cling feel or cling wrap we call it in Australia just so that the glue doesn't get on there. So I just wind it around, put some PVA glue, just give it a moment to dry-ish and then just slide it off and that will give you this curly little little feature so we need it quite fine so that's the plan anyway all right guys i will leave it at that have a great day have a great week if it's monday for you and at the end of this you will see the finished photos of the little pumpkin the this one won't pop up then for a second video i don't think because we've pretty much finished the prompt to where i want to take it so that'll give me some extra days i can put towards the french garden piece all right, everyone, look after yourselves. Bye for now. Okay, I'm back just for a brief, brief moment. I finished my leaves and I've ironed the red ink away and I'm just adding my little ten tendrils. So I thought I'd just show you what I did. I left the, the um, thread quite long. I used two DMC threads, wound them around the end of the book all pop some glue on it and just sort of kept massaging it until it sort of dried and then slid them off. Um, must put the pin back in the glue. I then thread threaded the needle with the threads that were making these little tendrils. That allows me to bring them back into my work and secure them off. So just a little tip there, when you, do, when you make them, if you are doing them, just give yourself that little bit extra thread so that you can reattach your needle and then add them back into your work. And they're still sort of just drying. So they've sort of got that nice bit of length there. I might just take that little bit off. I'm thinking that is going to work. I'll just get rid of that bit there. Just shorten it up a little bit. And then I just want to make sure my bullion stitches are sneaking to the front, not disappearing behind. All that work and they disappear. The other thing is, before I turn the camera on, I found the photos of the pumpkins in the shed having been harvested by my father, ready for sale. So at the end, you'll get some photos of some real pumpkins. There we go, bringing it up to the camera. 
can just make out the little tendil, tendils. Oh, for goodness sakes, forget that word. The little curly things. There technically is a heap of little curly things down here on the actual vine itself, but it's just getting too small that it just wouldn't, wouldn't be seen. So there's my pumpkin. Love him. He's great. Thanks again, Sonia, for doing that um, and giving us a little le lesson on beaded pumpkins. I feel, oh, I feel like I've learnt something new. All right, guys, look after yourselves. And at the end of this video, you'll see photos of this and photos of my father's pumpkins. So that just goes to show I am the daughter of a pumpkin farmer. <laughs> All right, guys, look after yourselves. Bye.